So, what I uh, want to tell you about today is the interaction between bacteria, those are the bad guys, trying to get to different organs, and the white cells that have to keep them from doing it. And the only way they're going to do that is if they can control the blood vessels and keep the bacteria from descending. And so I'll tell you a little bit about one of the programs that the uh, Snyder Institute of Infection, Community and Inflammation. We need fancy imaging, so two photon, we need uh, a spinning disc to be able to see inside these blood vessels in a living organism. So this is liver, you can see the green blood vessels and the little orange specks are your white cells. And you can image this and you can see the white cells crawling around in these blood vessels constantly patrolling, constantly looking for bacteria. And if you now put in some bacteria, these are Borrelia, this is what causes Lyme disease, you can see these white cells come together, start forming these large clusters, and start an immunity to try and prevent Borrelia from getting to joints and other places. If you don't have those cells, it's like your teenager staying home when you go on vacation. It's a party, okay? And so these are all Borrelia now, having a party in your blood vessels. Okay. And speaking of home, imagine now if you've got a big fancy house, lots of money, you've got an alarm system, and an intruder gets into your house. Well, the alarms go off, SWAT teams are immobilized, they come charging in, and they eliminate, kill the intruder. The next night, your little kid gets up, have a pee, sets off all those alarms. And the SWAT team comes charging in, and you can see this can make for a very bad outcome. Luckily, the SWAT team is intelligent, they can make decisions. Our white cells sometimes aren't. And so the red is a little bit of injury, and the green are your white cells. And so trying to understand and figure out ways of getting those green guys not to go there we believe will make a huge impact on many diseases. Stroke, heart attacks, transplants, anywhere where there's tissue injury. Now, you, I found this on YouTube. The red, these round things, no red. The round things are red blood cells. The big guy's a neutrophil or a white cell. And the little tiny guy in front of them is a bacteria running for their lives. And you can watch this interaction happening and look at how inefficient this guy is. He leaves one behind and just chooses after another. And keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. All right, and eventually, they'll catch up and kill the bacteria. This is without blood flow. With blood flow, that white cell would have never caught that bacteria. And I hope our immune systems aren't that inefficient. And in fact, they aren't. They make use of something that the spiders make use of. The spider doesn't chase after flies. It creates nets to catch them. And our white cells, actually shown here, X marks the stop, spot, will make a net. And I don't know how well you can see the little tiny particles in there, but as he starts making these nets, he actually sops up all the bacteria without having to chase after them. And so, in this way, they actually kill. Make these large nets, which allows them to catch and kill bacteria. And I will say that a lot of this is applicable to human disease. This year alone, we've had some real tragedies in terms of little kids dying in ICUs because of sepsis, which is infection of the whole body in the blood. We've seen lots of problems, and so uh, with the support of the Alberta Heritage Foundation for Medical Research, now the AIHS. Uh, we have a team grant in Alberta Sepsis Network, and each septic patient now is immediately in our team grant studies. And I'd like to just make one last point. None of that work would have happened without HFMR, without the province, without federal government investing in infrastructure. We often think of buildings as infrastructure, and I would say that 
things, things like large equipment, people, people who know how to operate equipment. Some of the equipment, I don't know where the on button is on anymore. And so having a physicist like Pina Colarusso running our equipment and helping us image, is absolutely essential. And so I'll make a plea to AIHS to think about infrastructure. Thank you very much.